Hi guys and happy Friday. Um, you know, I've been thinking a lot this week about what makes us happy and what makes us feel fulfilled in in life. But most of, most often, um, I think about what stops us and what stops us from achieving everything that we want to. And that could be in our personal lives, it could be you know meeting the right person, it could be in our business lives. You know, what stops us from making the money we wanna make? What stops us from meeting the people that we want to meet you know uh, I always said there was two people that I wanted to meet in the world one was Mark Cuban and the other one was Richard Branson that is just so far right so I uh, just want to do a quick shout out before I go further hi Bonnie hi James thanks for joining um, if you're listening just you know say hi don't don't be shy um, so the thing is a lot of people look at um, when they when they get into the world of like you know why am I not achieving what I want to achieve they they either feel one of two things they feel slighted and cheated and they blame other people or they blame the world or circumstance and, and all that kind of a thing and then other people will say well I, I want to go meet these people and then those people who decide that they want to you know achieve something they want to make more money they want to meet you know the Dalai Lama or in my case Richard Branson um, but they just kind of expect that to happen but it doesn't work that way so there's something called manifestation you may or may not heard of and I, I'm okay with it I don't really like the way that it has been defined but manifestation is basically you think something and you believe that something will happen and therefore it does so I've always wanted to meet Mark Cuban and so this past summer I was in Vegas and I did he was literally standing at a bar in Vegas and I was like oh my god like that's one of the people like I idolized and I went up and said nothing intelligent but that's okay I shook his hand and I took a picture if you look at my cover photo on Facebook yep me and Mark Cuban but that's not normally how it works so for instance I want to go and I want to meet Richard Branson but it's not exactly just kind of happening and I've wanted to meet him for years well he hasn't exactly you know walked up and rung my doorbell so if I really wanted to meet him I've got to do stuff that's going to put into action the the steps or um, or the activities that are going to actually accomplish that particular goal. Let me give you an example. I was just having lunch today with my mentor. His name is Tony and I love this man. Like honest to God to the core of my being. I owe him so much. And so Tony and I were talking about a guy named Brad. Now Brad runs a multi-million dollar company and um, he had it in his head that he wanted to meet the Prime Minister of India. And he didn't know the Prime Minister of India, but he dis he was in Ottawa and he found out that the Prime Minister of India was going to be at this particular dinner, asked enough people who were going to be at that dinner if he could go with them. So he managed to, sorry for the background noise, I'm outside my house. So he managed to get an invitation to this dinner, but he didn't want to end there. He knew that if he was going to really make an impact on the Prime Minister and, and be remembered, that he needed to learn Hindi, the language that this Prime Minister spoke. So he taught himself just enough to be able to say something along the lines of, you know, so pleased to meet you. I'm, I'm you know, a big advocate or, or a big, um, very impressed with all the stuff that you've done um, and uh, and so on. And the he was in a row of people who were meeting the Indian Prime Minister and he had shaken his hands all along. When this man, when Brad, you know, shared these words in, in his language, he stopped and he would not let his hand go. Now, that was all Brad knew in Hindi and he had to say, well, like, I literally don't know anymore to be able to keep this conversation going. Um, but the, the Indian Prime Minister was so excited about how much work and effort this, this guy had put into just learning a few phrases. He gave him this giant hug and he told his entourage, like, I need to meet this guy. And, and the moral of that story um, and the reason why Brad wanted to meet with him is Brad has an education system that could bring education to the rural villages of India and he believed so strongly in what he was doing and the meaningful change that I would bring to those people in India that he did everything he could to try to get in front of the right people to make his dream happen and so part of it is manifestation part of it is Brad could have said I want to meet the Prime Minister but he didn't wait for the Prime Minister to come in and you know knock on his door he did everything he could to move in that direction and he didn't know exactly how he was going to meet this Indian Prime Minister but he took the opportunities and then he just rolled with it and what a lot of people forget is that um, you know and I've been with people I have what I call my bad decision boyfriend which was the relationship I had between husband one and husband two and all he did was wait for a job to land on his lap and I'm just like well just go get one like it, it, it's it's not called you know having a job come to you and knock on your door it is you go get a job there's actually like there's a verb in there that requires you to actually 
do shit. Um, but he always waited and he was miserable, 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 miserable because life wasn't turning out as he wanted it to, but he also wasn't doing anything to make the life he wanted actually happen. And so what I've been doing the past couple of years and particularly accelerated the past couple of months is looking at all the stories that I have been telling myself that have been holding me back because there's no reason any of us couldn't meet the Prime Minister of India or the Dalai Lama or Richard Branson or whomever. But we tell ourselves like, who are we? And like, why would I go ahead and do that? Well, because you want to and there's no reason why you can't. And when you start putting that out into the world, you kind of put the balls into motion um, and, and things can start happening and opportunities will start presenting themselves. Now, the other piece of the puzzle is you just can't think that you want something to happen and then just expect it to show up in your life. You've got to take action to start getting you there. You've got to start working towards those things and the opportunities will present themselves and you will get there. So again, I've wanted to meet Richard Branson forever. So I'm putting it out there. If you know Richard Branson or can get me in front of him, even for five minutes, I'd be really, really grateful. But Tony, my beautiful, wonderful, awesome mentor is now thinking, now that I've told him this, he's like, how can I help Rebecca achieve that? And so, you know, if you want something, you decide you want it, you believe you can get it, and you ignore the story in your head. You ignore the little nasty guy on your shoulder who's telling you that you can't. Because that little nasty guy on your shoulder is the only thing that's holding you back. It's not that you don't have the skills, the intelligence, the opportunity, the money, or anything. That stuff will come, or it'll, it'll just solve itself based on the opportunities that will come your way. But you have to sort of say, you know, you get rid of that little, you know, the, the, the story, the big negative storyteller on your shoulder and believe something different. And, um, you know, I've shared this example before of like, I just wanted to, I just wanted to be a published author because it builds authority. And I think I have a message worth spreading. And so I wrote 17,000 words of a book. I don't know how to edit it. I don't know how to promote it. Don't know how to do any of that stuff. But along the way, I saw an ad for a company that is now going to do that for me. And yeah, I had to spend money to get there, but that's money well spent because now I can focus on making sure I get my message right. I'll leave it to other people smarter than me to get those other aspects done um, that are required to actually you know, get the book published. For me, the most important thing is to make sure that my message is on point and it's helpful and meaningful for other people. So I don't know if you guys have anything in your lives that you want. It might be a better relationship. It could be a promotion. Um, you know, I helped one of my friends recently who, you know, wanted to get a promotion. She is smart as fuck. That girl is brilliant. And we went out for dinner. This is almost a year or two. I can't even remember how long ago it is. Um, and I just basically said, do you want that director? Shoot for VP because you've got what it takes and she's smart we went over all the different things that she could do she told herself a different story and she got the promotion and she is so happy and i am even happier for her because that's hard to overcome and i spent my life telling myself stories of why i can't do things why things are out of my reach part of it is how i grew up part of it is the rules that i was under um with a group that uh religious group that i belong to that i you know broke out of 10 years ago but those stories, those mindsets, they don't change too easy. And it's been a tough go. And um, I mean, some of the stories I've had to overcome are simply that I used to get into my car, turn on, turn it on, and I would say, and now I'm going to die. I would say goodbye to my children when they went to school and I would think, and I'm never gonna see them again. Those were horrible stories to be telling yourself. And there's a whole reason as to where they come from. A bit of a, you know, how I grew up was a fixation on death. Uh, big shock there. But um, but it took me three years to get rid of that story. But I'm it's done. It's over. I don't think that way anymore. I don't think that every time my kids go to school that I'm never going to see them again. It's okay um, for me to to let that story go and to just say, you know what, we're going to do so many awesome things. Um, and yeah, of course, things happen in life. And I'm not saying that just because you think something, it will happen. But we can do a lot more than we're currently doing simply by changing the story we have in our heads reframing it, telling yourself a different story, telling yourself that things are possible, taking action that moves you towards that goal. Again, you need forward momentum in order to act like a magnet to get all the help and all the resources you need to accomplish that. And then when the opportunities arise, you just take them 
and it has been one of the most amazing experiences that I have ever gone through and continue to go through because I opened myself up to that. So that's your Friday message. I hope you guys have found this helpful and interesting. As always, if you like it, please share it. I always love to uh, when people share my stuff. If you found this interesting, leave your comments below. And just one last thing before I go, um, very, very soon, I'm just working on a slight technical glitch. I'm gonna be opening up a monthly program where I'm gonna be not only sharing just small snippets like this, but actual strategies that will help you to reframe those stories and then give you actionable tactics and processes to get you to whether it's a better marketing strategy, better sales, more conversions. Um, it could even apply to your personal lives as well because if our personal lives are in shambles, it really makes it difficult to concentrate on the business stuff we need to, to, uh, to take care of. So look for that coming up. It's called Ignite Your Fire and it's coming soon. Again, I love technology, but not when it doesn't work for me. All right, guys, have a fantastic weekend and I hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye, guys.